The eagle has landed. Let's get to unboxing and whip this bad boy out to pop a beer in it. Yes, we are back on Flying Wombat TV, the channel all about beer, banter, and bloody good times with our first unboxing video. So the awesome, awesome people over at Keg King sent this over to us. It is the 30 liter Apollo Snub Nose Fermenter. So this thing is pretty awesome. You can do pressure fermentation. It's got an inbuilt thermo well. You can do attachments to add like a chiller coil and all that kind of awesome stuff. So let's get this bad boy opened up. Uh, start assembling it, clean it, get it ready to use, fill it up with beer, ferment, and then, you know, chat about all the pros and cons about this awesome little unit. Wait, scissors. Scissors. Wait, I need scissors. scissors. <laughs> Let's get some scissors. We need them for an unboxing <laughs> video. All right. Ooh. Here we go. Let's rip this bad boy open. Oh. <laughs> awesome. So this actually is very, very familiar because I started my home brewing journey, obviously using buckets and stuff, but the first like real fermenter I got was a Fermentosaurus way back in the day. And this is a very, very similar design, but I'm super keen to test this one out because it's got a bunch of features that the original Fermentosauruses did not have. So let's get this stand out. Awesome. Pop that onto there. And then we've got a bunch of bits and bobs. So I believe this is the thermo well. Yes, it is, which is really, really awesome. The reason why you want something like this as a home brewer and why it's so cool to have it on a system like this is because A, this is actually affordable, unlike one of these. <laughs> <laughs> this is a massive price difference yeah. <laughs> to have very, very similar functionality. So this thermo well basically means you can have a temperature probe inside this thing and it goes all the way down into the center of the fermenter so that you actually know what the temperature is in that center of fermentation going on. The reason why you want something like that, because A, it's just awesome to know what temperature you're actually fermenting at, so you can start troubleshooting if things go wrong. For example, if you got all these weird off flavors and you knew that you fermented way too hot, well, you actually know that that was the problem. B, it means you can also get other kinds of attachments, like a chiller coil. So you could get that as an add-on, attach it to the lid of this um, Apollo, and then you can control the temperature. So with like a little temperature system or like with a glycol system over here, you can basically start pumping in cold water or cold glycol into the fermenter when it starts to get too hot. So you have full temperature control and then you can wrap a heating belt like the ones we have around here around it during the colder months so that when it is getting too cold, heating belt activates, starts warming it up and then you've got perfect temperature control on your Apollo system. So that's a super, super awesome feature to have for the home brewer level. It's basically taking home brewing, but adding a whole bunch of like commercial brewing applications without dropping thousands and thousands of dollars. Carry handles, that's so good. Oh, are we filming? <laughs> We're filming. That's awesome. Okay, <laughs> carry handles. Discovering things. So good. Yeah. So. Uh, some of the older versions of things that were like this used to have carry handles like on the um, the the frame, the the what do you call it, the stand itself, which was not super practical if you needed to move the fermenter or something, because then you're kind of like holding it from the sides and squashing it in. Carry handles, that's that's really awesome. Well done, guys. So cool. Anyway, let's pop this down here and start opening up this stuff. So here we have the lid, and this is the thing that makes all of this good stuff work. Oh, I do need to attach this scale so that I actually know how many liters is in this thing. So that's awesome. You just stick that to the side of the fermenter, and then you know how many liters you have at any given moment, how many gallons, liters, whatever. So this thing here has a couple of different ports and attachments, as we can see in here. Basically what it means is, the thermo well, I'm guessing, is gonna sit on this central one right here, but then you can attach two different posts. So you can have a gas post, so you can actually do pressure fermentation, and then you can have the liquid out post. So once fermentation is done, you can actually transfer that beer by connecting a beer line onto here, connect that corresponding beer line onto your keg, and then just do a transfer by pumping CO2 into the gas post, which pushes all the beer out of the liquid post into the fermenter. So you can do zero oxygen transfers very, very easily, which is critical to protecting your hard made beer. Next up, out of the gates. So, oh, filter, awesome. So, this thing comes with a floating dip tube. So, let's grab this little thing out here. Oh, 
temperature probe, by the way. So this is just a, a basic temperature sticker. So you can whack that onto the side of your fermenter and then it will give you a rough indication of what your temperature of fermentation is if you decide not to use the thermo well, I suppose. Let's pop that over there for now. Now, this thing over here that looks like a fishing buoy, what this basically is, is gives you the ability to attach this to the end of this. So this here is your filter, so it's the beer outline. So as you pump the beer out, it passes through this filter first so that you remove a lot of that hop debris, that shrub, all that kind of stuff that doesn't transfer over into your keg and block up your beer lines when you're trying to pour your beers. This thing here basically keeps this thing floating. So you attach this so that it's floating just below that little ball. I'll assemble all this in a minute and actually show you guys properly. But it basically means that this is floating at the top of the liquid line. So instead of picking up all the trub and everything at the bottom, this is floating at the top where the most clear beer is, and it will keep floating on the top as you transfer that beer out, so that you can be looking at this from the side and decide the exact moment, hey, we're gonna have too much trub down the bottom there, let's disconnect and stop transferring, and now you only have clear beer inside your keg. All right, apparently we're gonna film while I assemble. So I am a man and I haven't read the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs instructions? <laughs> Who needs instructions? Me, apparently. <laughs> <As he tries laughs> that goes to... on there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that feels right. That feels probably maybe right. Get on there. There we go. Okay, that goes on there. Now we need to start attaching all of these posts. So let's attach this to that. No? Yeah? No? Maybe I should read the instructions. Yeah. <laughs> Let's read the instructions. <laughs> so one of us is smart. Odin figured out how to, uh, where to put the O-ring. Now let's do the dip tube, well the floating dip tube basically. So you can also get these on kegs, which is pretty useful. Um, so there are some home brewers that ferment in a keg and then they transfer from that keg to another keg. So they do something like this with the dip tube. Um, this basically means you can cut out one extra step and you can just use this instead of using two separate kegs. So ferment in this, transfer to one keg, if that makes sense. All right, so this goes on to the end of this. Come on, go on. Go on. There we go. It does help to wet these a little bit and actually lube up the tubes. I should have done that, but I haven't done that. Learn from my mistakes. That one goes on there. And then this attaches to this ring here. So I need to decide how low I want this to sit. I attach it to that one, that should be about right because that will float to about there. Yeah, or I can attach it to that and get a little bit extra. Let's attach it a little bit lower. We better be safe than sorry. All right, come on. There we go. <laughs> Lost your balls, mate. I lost my ball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for the ball to drop. <laughs> okay. Here we are. We're cooking with gas now. So the way that this works is that ball floats up here. Dip tube is sitting down here. So you're always collecting at the top of the beer line. But the whole idea behind this being a little bit higher is it means you're not going to suddenly, you know, just start pulling out gas. This is actually sitting below the level of liquid which is important in a transfer. All right, so now this attaches to something, oh, to this. Let me pull this out. Here we go. So this is the beer outposts. So um, if you don't know how to tell a beer outpost from a gas outpost, the beer outpost doesn't have those little lines cut into the sides of the, uh, of the, where you put the wrench. I can't remember what that's called. Anyway, that's just one way to tell. Let's pop that into there. Let's pop this little thing on top of that. There we go. Now this goes into that and this goes on this. You know what? I am gonna use a little bit of water because that's a snug fit. I'll be back. Okay, gas line. So, as I just mentioned, see those little cuts on the sides there where your wrench would go? That tells you that this is a gas line. That's basically it. So, oh, and then you know, another one of these things, pop that in there, pop this on top, and then that is gas post done. Obviously, we'll tighten all this stuff up with wrenches in a little bit, but it is plastic, so just, you know, be careful. Don't tighten the living daylights out of it because you shred it and then you'll never get it off or we'll never be able to work again and then you're ordering a replacement bit. So it just needs to be, you know, a little bit more than finger tight. 
So your uh, dip tube, your floating dip tube goes onto the beer line post. Come on, go on. I've got butterfingers at the moment. Get in there. Yes. That just goes on nice and snug. You also can use, um, what do you call them? Like beer line clamps, if you want to make sure that this definitely doesn't move anywhere. But to be honest, I've never really used them with this sort of stuff and it generally works fine. But if it is like slipping too much, use one of those clamps, clamp it down so that it just stays there. And then that goes in there. Now, you need to figure out the next part, these pressure release valves. What am I doing with that? Actually, before I do that, let's do this. Thermo well, that obviously attaches to this. So, that's done. So we've got three different pressure release valves. Oh, by the way, it goes into this little thing. So we did just have a quick look off camera on the Keg King channel and look at the assembly instructions. Would recommend doing that. I'll drop a link down below. But we've got three different release valves. So the red, which we don't have, we have a white, is 35 PSI. So I'm going to assume the white is the red in this case. The purple is 15 and the, 10, and the blue is 10 PSI. So... I am gonna whack on, I'm gonna whack on the 15, I'll whack on the purple, because I typically don't do a pressure fermentation above 15 PSI anyway, so that kind of makes the most sense to me. Anyway, the way that this thing works, oh, after I screw it in, the way that this thing works is you can basically just release that the same way that you do on a keg, just to release pressure when it gets too high, and this being there also means that when the pressure reaches above 15 PSI, it's gonna automatically push it up and release it. That's what that string, that spring strength is set to in there. So now we can screw this one on top on to here. Screw on. All right, that is done. So, oh, we're basically finished. Now let's whack this top lid on and we're good to go. Now we are going to sanitize this thing, clean it up, get it ready to go, and then we're gonna fill it up with beer. So I'm just gonna wash this one out with um, Stella sand and then uh, we'll get to um, filling up with some XPA which we'll release the recipe of on the next video to be released on the channel. Stay tuned. Shake that snobby. Shake that snobby. Hey! Yeah, so they're pretty easy to clean because they're nice and small. You don't really need a whole CIP system. So we've just filled this up with water and Stella sand. Big shake, we're good to go. <laughs> Stickers are done. So yeah, the whole total working capacity, well, the total capacity is 30 litres. So it lines up just about at the bottom of that lip there, and then, you know, one litre down there. You'll, you'll get it when you use one. Honestly, it's not rocket science. It's putting a sticker on. It's fine. And then we just put our temperature sticker next to it, so get the readings together. May as well. Uh, now, I'm going to push this, um, this um, kiwi. I'm going to push this uh, sanitizer liquid out of the... <clears throat> Out of the beer post. <laughs> about to fall over. You couldn't do that for long. <laughs> I'm going to push the sanitizer out of the beer line post so that I can actually sanitize that as well before we fill this up with beer. So I'm going to pump some gas into this, push the beer out of that, and then this thing is ready to fill up with some fresh, oh shit, with some fresh made XP. I almost spilled it on myself. <laughs> so uh, we'll just quickly do that now. We just um, connected a, a quick beer line to that. Open this up, turn this gas on, and before I spill it everywhere, let's put that there. Always helps to just wet them a little bit so they can actually slide on properly, you know, lube it up. And as this starts building pressure, that pressure is going to force it out of the beer line the same way as a keg works. So I'm going to do this for a little bit just to make sure that this is actually sanitized, and then we are good to fill it up. Perfect That's my alarm to add hops to the beer. <laughs> okay, we are cleaned, we are sanitized, we are set up and ready to go. So we are transferring a bunch of XPA wort into this thing to start fermenting for its maiden voyage. So I think, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be pretty interesting to see how this one plays out. We are gonna pressure ferment. So we're gonna pressure ferment at about, uh, I'm gonna go with 10 PSI. And to pressure ferment, you will need one of these things. So basically a spunding valve. So we can actually control how much pressure is coming out of that tank at any given moment. So we're gonna set ours to 10, whack this onto the gas outlet post, and then it's just gonna release pressure at that set, um, you know, 10 PSI. Anyway, once this has done fermenting and we will, well, I guess once this is done fermenting, we'll come back for the next part of the video where we transfer from this into a keg. So we'll see you then.
We're back, and now this is the final step of the whole journey of this Apollo fermenter. So what we're doing right here is just transferring all of our fresh made XPA into this keg, and basically what we got going on is carbon dioxide is pumping into this fermenter at about 15 PSI. This regulator is releasing gas on the keg at about 12 PSI, so that the pressure in this keg is always lower than the pressure inside this fermenter, and that pushes all the beer through the beer line into the keg. So that's one of the really, really cool things about uh, you know, fermenters like this that can handle pressure is you can actually use gas to push beer along instead of just using gravity, which is always, you know, nice if you can't do that whole kind of setup. Anyway, uh, basically all we need to do from here is transfer all of this beer into this keg and that is job done. And then you guys will see us very, very soon where we're going to talk about all the pros and cons of this fermenter. Is it worthwhile? Would we recommend it? Etc. Etc. I'll give you our honest feedback thoughts whilst we're tasting the beer that this thing finished fermenting. So we'll be back in a minute. Worth mentioning guys as a quick little interlude that this awesome shirt that I'm wearing right here, as well as Odin, step around the camera. Oh, and the missus. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we've, we <laughs> <laughs> we've got a bunch of hoodies, we've got shirts, we've got beanies, we've got hats, a bunch of really awesome merch, which is now available on theflyingwombat.com.au. So head over to our website. It's got a bunch of brewing calculators. It's got our whole recipe library. It's got a bunch of weird blogs and stuff that I like to pop out of my brain, as well as awesome wombat merch so that you guys can come and join the Flying Wombat family. So check it out and uh, let us know what you think. Now we're back, we've got the beer in glass, and we're ready to actually give our final thoughts on this thing. So first of all, cheers guys. Mm, nice, fresh. Um, pros and cons with this unit. Pros, cheap. It is much cheaper to go with something like this than a big stainless steel unit that you guys see in the background in a lot of our videos. Pro number two, it gives you a lot of the features that you actually get with like a commercial type uh, conical stainless steel unit. You have a conical shape down the bottom which has a couple of benefits. One, it reduces contact between the yeast and the, and the beer once it's been fermenting. You don't want too much of that contact surface area because it can produce off flavors as you progress through fermentation. This conical shape means that all of that sediment slowly progressively starts to drop down towards the bottom. And because of the cone shape, it means you get less surface area contact than we would say with a big you know, circle fermenter or a demijohn or like a big bucket or anything like that. Two, you can pressure ferment because of this design and because it's pressure tested. You can pressure ferment, which is really, really cool for home brewers for a whole variety of reasons, which we don't need to go through right now. But the name of the game primarily is that you can save on a bunch of CO2 by having your beer pre-pressurized. It's ready to go and it's ready to get basically get cold crash and then that last little bit of pressure added to it. And two, it means that you can actually ferment ale yeast or any yeast in general at higher temperatures than the normal set temperature range because it's pressure fermentation. Uh, what else can we talk about with pros? Uh, I guess another one is floating dip tube. Super, super useful because you're not gonna pick up all that bottom trub or that bottom gunk. It's gonna float at the top level of that beer liquid and progressively go down as you transfer that beer out. However, on the slight little bit of cons, and this might be more user error than anything to be honest, I think I had my ball and my uh, dip tube set slightly too far apart and the mesh chamber that you see down there that the, is acting as a filter so that the, the, the hops don't go through the beer line as you transfer out did collect a little bit of hop debris and a little bit of yeast trub and it got a bit heavy and it actually dragged the whole thing down into the bottom. So I need to do another experiment with this and see now that I've brought them closer together, if that's gonna help with that and that will actually stay above all that trub. So I kind of had to pump a little bit of gas into the, um, into the beer line to help it kind of raise and lift out of all that trub, but not the worst thing in the world, it was just a little thing, so worth considering. Um, what else? Oh, something I did really, really enjoy is the fact that this has a thermo well, which is a huge, huge plus. I actually knew the temperature inside this fermenter the whole way through, and I had that heat belt on it. So even in the middle of winter here in Sydney, Australia, I could keep this thing at the right fermentation temperature. What I would really love to do is as we get closer towards summer, get a glycol chiller coil attachment for this, so that this also has cold temperature control as well, because that would be really, really awesome. Um, all in all guys, for a hundred bucks, this is the unit you get. Super, super worthwhile. Leagues ahead of fermenting in something like 
This, our little bucket fermenters. This is a massive game changer for a plastic fermenter. So highly, highly recommend getting something like this. It gives you a lot of the benefits of fermenting with a uh, stainless steel conical style fermenter, like a uni tank, without spending $2,000 or $3,000 for all the attachments. And in future, I would also like to experiment with the, the dry hop component with this thing. You can get an attachment so that you can do dry hopping, like I mentioned when we did the, uh, the beer transfers and the, the dry hopping for this thing earlier in the video. Anyway, all in all, super, super solid unit. Massive thank you once again to Keg King and the guys over there, Nick, for sending this out to us. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, guys. So uh, until next time, we'll catch you then. And as always, brew on, guys. Cheers.